So now you're ready for 10 infuriating ZBrush professional mistakes I see in the industry as an art director. If you're making these mistakes, then you should definitely watch the previous video. I've added a bonus at the end along with a huge queue of advanced tutorials. If you want to stay ahead, subscribe and keep an eye out for those. After this video, make sure you have yourself covered and watch the beginner and intermediate video. Could be embarrassing if you just miss one mistake could save you a lot of time in the future. Take note of this ZBrush mistake I see a lot of professionals do, and that's the underutilization of the different materials inside of ZBrush. So they're probably used to getting a character to this sort of level, but after this process, we want to be taking in substance and painting things like roughness and sweaty and wet areas. You want to see how your object's going to perform under those situations. So for example, with basic material, can we see sharper highlights? Now at this point, it might be that your roughness is a little bit too noisy. So at this point, it's the perfect opportunity to basically smooth out parts of the skin so you can transfer it onto the next stage. Grasp this concept and it leads on quite nicely. And that's putting too much detail or too much noise into your sculpt. So people can get carried away you know, with advanced techniques like texturing XYZ displacement maps, bringing them in from Maya and then pasting them onto their characters. Uh, if we're thinking in terms of games, from a distance, we're not going to see all that noise and it's not going to translate very well. So don't get too caught up in zooming right, right up to the cam camera and basically putting all these intricate little details. Uh, it might not actually matter at the end of the day. Listen to this mistake. So as a professional, you've probably built up a lot of brushes over time. You can install additional plugins that are going to help you with that whether you had projects where you were working on stone, cloth, and advanced details, um, you can collect those in XMD Toolkit. It's a very useful plugin. So if you do ever come back to a project, instead of sort of like dragging directory files all over the place, you can just use this software. Consider this mistake that you're underutilizing 3D references and ecochets. So as a professional, you can probably afford to buy things like this to assist you in your production. It's a fairly recent feature, but under transform, you can bring your ecoche into your model and then just dial this up split screen. And then as you rotate with your original, you can sort of match reference that to the original anatomy of the 3D scan. Another mistake is one of optimization. So you might be doing the same process again and again and wasting a lot of time. So if you are doing a process again, under macros, you can record a new macro. It's going to record all your processes, then you can replay it at a later date. So a good example of this is something that comes default in ZBrush, and that's the appendize, like especially for characterists. So with this button, maybe it's something that you record. If we press appendize, it's going to bring in a couple of processes. So append a sphere, apply the toy shader, and for some reason it does black, but you can turn this to white. And then what you can do is just position that inside your model, and then obviously you save a lot of time. A good personal example of this is for anyone who's done skin texturing, you understand that when you bring in an alpha, you obviously have to modify the mid value to about 50. So obviously I do that again and again, and this time I've just turned it into a macro. So whenever that happens, I can just press this once. Allow me to elaborate on this ZBrush mistake. So obviously we're in a different software here and it's being too religious with the software itself. So with cloth, we've obviously got ZBrush that does certain simulations. There are going to be other software alternatives that are better at doing that. In this example, it's Marvelous Designer. And the same can be true for anything you're making. So instead of making it in ZBrush, it might be easier to create that in Blender or Maya and then transfer over it in. So don't be too strict with your workflows and just sort of like branch out if it's going to save you time. I want you to know you could be making this mistake as a professional in ZBrush. And that's not making use of the layer system or the morph brushes or the undo history all in combination. So obviously when we start to get very high detailed subjects, um, we don't want to mess up what we have already made. So one thing we can do is use layers. So under layers, we can obviously press create new layer, insert some skin detailing or information. And then if we don't like that, we can obviously delete the layer or we could also tone it down with the slider. Now you can combine that layer system with morph and store morph targets. So under morph target, we can store the original or the layers that we have shown. And then when we reactivate the new layer and start recording, almost using it like an eraser, we can use the morph brush. So under brushes, we have morph. I have it docked to the side here because I use it a lot. And with that brush, we can almost use it as a very selective eraser for um, the certain parts of details that we've done. So we don't have to completely cull an entire layer. We can methodically take and bring things forth and back. Imagine this mistake. So you've got a fairly large project and off to the side, you've been creating advanced details. They might have a lot of geometry. Now with each incremental save, you don't necessarily have to save that within the project. And what happens with 
every time that you save it, you're basically duplicating, wasting a lot of space. So this is more of a disk management. So if you are doing a project, it might be an idea to think in terms of tools. So for, say, for example, there's a special effect or a sword. I'd save that off as a tool and then bring it into your project later instead of saving that with the project again and again and again, which is going to just take up all your disk space. Also, at the same time, it's probably worth looking into your sub tools, see if there's, there's anything that needs deleting and trimming or going back for your increments. And if you see here, there are a couple of numbers missing. And that just means if two are looking a bit too similar and I'm far on the process, I'll go, do, go down, select every other one and then just basically cull those. So eventually what you should have at the end is a list of increments that have made a lot of progress, a lot of steps. And maybe even after that project, you can compress those all down or maybe extract useful things that you might use later outside of that zip. So if you're a sculptor, I'd pay attention to this mistake, uh, especially if you're a professional passing on sculpts onto texture artists and material artists, they'll ask you to do this. So it's when you put too much information into the surface and inherently the object becomes a bit rough. So when you're passing it onto a texture artist, they can't work with it because the normal map is fighting against the things like the specularity and the roughness. So you want to tone it down a little bit. This is potentially an example of something that's a little bit too noisy. I would find it hard to make a very smooth surface out of all this noise because the normal map's basically going to be tearing it apart and tearing those specularities uh, in two. So what you should do is basically, you know, do some test bakes and see how this surface noise is working. And with the last details, you know, if you're using layers, you might want to dial down those layers and see how it renders out when it comes to things like roughness values. Bear with me with this said brush mistake but I can often see professionals become a bit complacent when it comes to new updates and new features. So say, for example, I've seen certain character artists that didn't even know that they could select multiple sub tools and deform and adjust those. So for example, we've got the cog wheel here. There's loads of interesting bend curves and deformers, which are like the equivalent of FFDs in, in Maya. So it's really useful for character artists. But if you're very seasoned and you think that you know what you're doing, try and stay on top of those updates because it might uh, improve your workflow along the way. With this bonus mistake, it's basically paying too much attention to the areas that don't matter. Obviously time is important and time is money. You might have a certain time frame as a professional to make something, say, for example, it's in a game and we're focusing too much on the boots. In this example, it's just a very quick scan data of a boot instead of making it from scratch. Um, I see a lot of people fall down that trap and wasting their time. Think about things in terms of screenshots and player views. So say, for example, you're doing a portfolio shot of a bust and potentially something's not very large on the screen. You don't want to be sculpting too much details. Now, it can get very tempting because on ArtStation with the biggest studios and the specialized character artists, they want to get every single side of a screenshot and they also have the time to do that. Whereas you're producing, if you're learning as well, uh, just ignore the bits that aren't going to be shown that much. 